Welcome back to Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to discuss the absorption, transport, and overall handling of one of the B vitamins, that is vitamin B12, which is often called cobalamin. Here's the chemical structure of a general cobalamin. You can see that it's got a large macrocyclic ring with a bunch of arms sticking off, and then there's a bunch of other stuff down here. And again, with these nitrogens, they are chelating a cobalt cation right in the center. And then there can be some group also attached to the cobalt from the top. Um, at least this portion of the molecule up here looks very similar to porphyrins. In fact, this is derived from porphyrins in some species of bacteria. Uh, this is not biosynthesized in humans, so therefore B12 is going to be an essential vitamin that we must obtain through the diet. And what we're going to talk about here is how we actually obtain the B12 from food, uh, absorb it, and then also handle it in the body. And what we'll find is that uh, the, the handling of B12 is actually very, very rigorous. And we'll talk about the reasons why that is briefly, but let's go into the process. So, again, lots of food proteins have B12, especially if you're eating animal products um, such as beef, chicken, um, they're going to have a lot of B12 in them. Now, that's, the most, that's the best source of B12, animal proteins. Those proteins are going to contain B12, so when you actually consume these, uh, that food is going to end up in your stomach, as we know. Okay, that's just part of digestion. The stomach is going to release an enzyme called pepsin, okay? And also, there's going to be acid, okay? Now, it's very important to protect the B12 from acid, okay? Um, there's actually, as we'll talk about in a minute, there are several um, acid labile bonds in this molecule, meaning uh, they're very susceptible to acid hydrolysis. In particular, this phosphate right here. Um, there's actually an amide bond right here, and then also the cobalt might accidentally or inadvertently get released from these uh, nitrogens by the addition of acid. So we have to protect this B12. And the way we do it is the stomach also secretes another protein that we normally don't talk about. It's called haptocorin. So when pepsin, which is an enzyme that degrades proteins, when pepsin degrades this sort of red protein, you can see it's being degraded right here, the B12 gets released, but the B12 will hopefully very quickly be picked up by this haptocorin. So haptocorin is sort of a transient carrier of, of, the, uh, of the B12 molecule. Okay? Now, the stomach is also going to secrete a protein called intrinsic factor. Okay? When we get into the small intestine, because of course the, the chyme that's in the stomach, which is going to contain this B12 bound to haptocorin, the chyme is going to go into the small intestine. And again, there's going to be more intestinal enzymes there, particularly in the duodenum. And then you're going to have to absorb stuff. One of those enzymes that's actually released by the pancreas, its exocrine glands, is trypsin. Trypsin is an enzyme very similar to pepsin. It's going to degrade proteins, and trypsin will actually degrade this haptocorin. So the haptocorin with B12 will wind up in the intestines. Trypsin, which will be there as well, will degrade the haptocorin because trypsin degrades proteins. You can see this purple haptocorin kind of being degraded there. Again, the B12 will be released. Now, the stomach secretes intrinsic factor. The intrinsic factor is a very stable protein, and it's going to come along with the chyme from the stomach into the small intestine. And so when the B12 gets released from haptocorin in the intestine via trypsin hydrolysis, the intrinsic factor is then going to pick up that B12. Okay, So now we have B12 bound to intrinsic factor, and actually the small intestine can actually absorb the intrinsic factor bound to B12, which will wind up in the small intestine. Now, again, the intrinsic factor will now be degraded, just like the haptocorin and the food proteins were when in the small intestine. That's going to release this B12 again. Okay, But luckily, the small intestines also have another B12 binding protein called transcobalamin. And transcobalamin kind of does the job of everything else. So transcobalamin picks up this free B12 in the small intestine, and it really just takes it to the liver, where the liver then distributes that B12 pretty much to all the peripheral tissues because there's a lot of them that are going to require B12. Okay, So um, the key with, with B12 handling is that the body handles it very carefully. Um, and 
it has to because of a couple reasons. One, it's completely an essential vitamin. We can't make any B12. This is explicitly done by bacteria. Now, the bacteria in the, in the intestines, your uh, microbiome, can make a little bit of B12, but in general, if you're not getting any through the diet, you're going to be deficient. And the reason it has to handle it also is because there are several very unstable bonds in this molecule. Here's, a, here's an amide bond right here that can actually be broken by acid hydrolysis in the stomach. Um, it might also, uh, there might also be some uh, protease activity that might actually be able to target this. The phosphate bond right here, this is a phosphodiester bond. This is actually also acid unstable. In addition to that, this cobalt is also unstable being chelated by these four nitrogens because if we're in the stomach acid, these nitrogens may be protonated and they will no longer be able to interact with the cobalt, which will then move away. Um, now we do have an enzyme to put the cobalt back in if it does uh, fall out, but we don't want to have to do that. We want to salvage as much as this B12 because this is going to be our major source of cobalt. The other reason that cobalamin handling has to be done very carefully is because simply cobalamin is an enormous molecule. It actually dwarfs the other B vitamins, and in fact the closest thing to it um, in terms of size, heme, heme is still a lot smaller than this. Porphyrins are smaller than this. Even heme A that has the very large Farnesyl group on it is still smaller. So the fact that it's very large um, requires something to hold on to it um, and carry it really around the body uh, from the small intestine to the liver and to the organs. But once it gets to the liver, that's going to be the main distribution center to give it to all the organs and tissues that are going to need this B12. Okay, so Hopefully this video gave you some good information on the absorption, transport, handling, and also the digestion of vitamin B12. And what we see generally is that there's a lot of B12 binding proteins that are going to take it each step of the way until its final distribution to the peripheral tissues. Thank you for watching this video. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.